one of the things about God being omnipresent and omniscient is that wherever you go, there he is. <laughs> that may sound simple, but a lot of times people forget that, that no matter what you do or what you say, that God is always present in a very real way. And so we, at times, put on spiritual blinders to kind of hide from God because like Adam, whenever we sin, we tend to go into the opposite direction. Rather than say, God, forgive me, we go, God, they did it. And we point the finger at someone else or we blame someone else for our own mistakes or our own inclinations that have given over to sin because no one is ever tempted by God. But when we give in to our own temptations, then the reality is, is that we participate in the process that causes us to sin. We think a thought, and then we don't reject that thought, but we go for it, and then it becomes a temptation. And then we have to make a decision to reject that, because it actually is like a seed planted or a weed planted in our hearts that we need to root out. And so God knows all this. So he's given us a way through Jesus Christ to always ask for forgiveness of sins, to confess with our mouth and to profess with our heart that Jesus Christ is our salvation for our souls, that he is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to equip us to better prepare us for those times when we are tempted and we do sin. In Tozer... The foolish man, no store of eternal treasure. But God said unto me, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall these things be? Luke 12, 20. Many of us are forgetting the caution of the Lord Jesus that we ought not to set our hearts on earthly things. He warned that there is a very real danger involved. The same heart of man that was made to commune with God and to hold fellowship with the divine trinity to soar away to worlds unknown and behold God upon his throne, that same heart may be locked up in a bank vault or in a jewelry box or somewhere else here on earth. We may have our affections set not on the things above, but on the things below. Jesus gave us the example of the foolish man who had accumulated corn, naively telling his soul to rest because he had many barns and lots and lots of corn. Jesus reminded him that he had to die and his store of corn, which had a legitimate and proper value on earth, could do him no further good because he had neglected the higher values. He had no store of eternal treasures laid up above. If we are wise, we will transmute any unit of goods or wealth upwards to another level of value, not determined by the world and its ways, but God and the way. And the same for our talents and gifts and abilities mind and strength and nervous energy. Our faithful missionaries do this for the ultimate values they seek are the heathen, the headhunters, the pagans, turning to Jesus Christ, putting away their idols and their sins and believing in Jesus with bright shining faces, singing the gospel and going to heaven one by one. These are the true values, the wealth of human beings translated and changed and purified by the grace of God. When we talk about laying for your, up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth is not corrupt, what goes into heaven is another human being. It's a person whose eternal soul God is causing to return to him, either for salvation or for damnation. And the reality of us helping in some way, whether to plant the seed, to water, or to cultivate the ground, is that which is eternal for us as far as doing the works that God has called us to do which is to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven where moth will not corrupt. And when you think of it that way, then you don't look at it as being a selfish motivation, but rather a determination to be someone who would cause salvation to come to a person who may be headed for damnation. Because without which, if a person who is not saved doesn't hear, know, and discover that they should be and they must be born again, 
then how would they come to the realization that God is real, except that you tell them? How would they know that God speaks to individual hearts and souls, except that you demonstrate it in your life? How would they come to a saving grace, except that someone let them know the good news that Jesus has died for their sins and that they can be forgiven for all that they have committed, everything that they have ever done. Because if Jesus died for one sinner, he died for all. And if he died for one sin that separates us from God, he died for all sin that we should find reconciliation to God our Father in the person of Jesus himself. We all need help daily to walk with God. We all ought to share with one another the reality of God in our lives. Not just for ourselves, but for those who need to hear that God is near.